before you took it away. 17th Street, maybe. Mm -hmm. Should we get it back? Not yet. Two American fucking killer of time. My boy's near house. Oh, your mom. I'm grinning. Five times a week. <laughs> that was classic. Howdy folks, Farmer Spaghetti here. So, for Father's Day, I decided to create this list here. Only, it's not Father's Day anymore, I know, but it's a little late. But I'm still doing it anyway. It's mostly a gift for my father. See, he's like eight hours away from where I live, so I can't really like directly give him anything or say anything to him, so he can watch this video if he wants. So that's why I decided to create this list of what I believe are the top 10 best TV dads or father figures. I also included father figures since I discovered while creating this list that what I consider to be the best TV dads were not always the actual dad to the characters in question, but acted as their dad just the same. So they count too. Now here it is. The top 10 best TV dads or father figures. According to me anyway. Number 10. Rocky. No, not the boxer. Jim Rockford's dad on the Rockford Files. This retired old lovable coot played by Noah Beery Jr. Always supported his son, even though he never really liked the fact that his son was in a business that nearly got both of them killed every week. You go, Rocky. Support your local dad, because he would support you. Number 9. Lucas McCain. Better known as the Rifleman, played by the awesome Chuck Connors. In the height of the Western craze, this single father raised his only one son alone. Usually it was the other way around. But Chuck Connors proved that a rifle-toting badass could keep law and order and raise a son with wholesome moral values at the same time. So way to go, Rifleman. You fire that rifle like you're firing your dick. That doesn't have innuendo written all over it. Looks like he's firing his dick. Oh, rifleman. Then look right at me like, yeah, you saw it. I fired my rifle like it was my dick. Now I'm breaking the fourth wall by looking directly at you. I can do that because I'm Chuck Connors, Rifleman. Let's move us right to number eight. Ward. Cleaver. That's right, he didn't always have to be so hard on the beaver. There was always a lesson to be learned in Ward Cleaver's logic, as he tried to raise his 250s kids with positive moral values, and tried to teach them to always play fair, and treat everyone as equals, which is a big step for the 50s I guess. And for Ward Cleaver, one of TV's first TV dads was always a wholesome influence. So way to be swell, Ward, you'll always be remembered. Then there's number 7, Homer Simpson. That's right, I said it, Homer Simpson. I'm only counting the first, I don't know, eight to nine seasons. That's The Simpsons to me. I know they're still on for some reason, but that's The Simpsons to me, okay? And that version of Homer Simpson is the most realistic version of my generation's average American dad. Only with this comedy twist that sort of made him look like he was a big dumb idiot. That was just to make it funny, which it was hilarious. I'm sure it's worn itself out by this point. But Homer Simpson, although sometimes dumb, was always a loving father that did what his intelligence level could do to support his family. I mean, this is a man whose mother ran out on him when he was just a child, as we find out in Homer Simpson's story arc over there, over these seasons. So I'll always raise my duff beard to Homer Simpson as one of the best TV dads. And now we're at number six which goes to Maurice Evans as Samantha Stevens' dad on Bewitched. I forget what his name is. Did he even have one? I don't know. That's not important. It is if you're a diehard fan of the show, you're like, you idiot. His name was Bob. No, no, I don't know what his name was. But right off the bat, having a warlock for a dad must be cool. It's different, at least. He was way more cool than Samantha's mom and Dora. And I always loved it when he would put Endora in her place. Because he was more powerful than she was in your face and door. And cheers to you, Maurice Evans. You are always the voice of reason, Dr. Zayas. Which brings us to number five, Captain Meryl Steuben, played by Gavin McLeod on the love boat. Hell yeah, to be raised on the love boat. That's what happened to Vicky Steuben when her dream finally came true, to go be with her father, the captain of the love boat, the most magical cruise ship on earth, being driven by a recovering alcoholic. And every week, she got to meet a mess of celebrities. Has-beens and never wases. He certainly gave her a good laugh. So I salute you, Captain Steuben, as one of TV's best dads. Just like number four, Carl Winslow from Family Matters. Played by Reginald Bell Johnson. Of course he's on my list of best TV dads. It was either him or Danny Tanner. I like Bob Saget, and like the rifleman, Danny Tanner raised not one, but three 
daughters on his own, but personality-wise, he could be a bit of a pain in the ass, a bit of a neat freak, a little annoying and whiny sometimes. But Carl Winslow was always positive and lovable, to the point where he and Steve Urkel single-handedly took over the whole damn show, pretty much making it the Steve Urkel and Carl Winslow show, where every week they would have a wacky adventure. So family matters to Carl Winslow. That is, when he's not off having a wacky adventure with Steve Urkel, which was a lot towards the end of the show. Which knocks us right into number three. Max Wright as Willie Tanner on ALF. Hey Willie, I broke your house. Ha, I kill me. That's right, what a great dad to let a puppet from Melmac live in your house. Just like he was a member of the family. And because his family loved ALF so much, Willie would put up with all his bullshit and shenanigans that also made his life a living hell at the same time. When he easily could have turned his ass into the alien task force, anytime he wanted, and probably would have been rewarded handsomely for it, but never did, because his family would hate him forever for it. So to Willie Tanner, a man who would tolerate anything to keep his family happy. Even a puppet from space that always threatened to kill his cat by eating it. So on to number two. This is one of those not actually a blood relative ones, but as my list is titled, father figures are just as qualified. That's why number two goes to Henry Warnemont as Punky Brewster's adopted father on Punky Brewster. This was a very emotionally powerful family show for me as a kid. It touched on a lot of serious subjects for a family show and always tried to project good moral values again. In a clearly imperfect world, as we see throughout the run of the show, as Punky Brewster's backstory unfolds, and then there's just old guy, played by George Gaines, Henry Warnemont, not some weird old pervert, just wants to help take care of this girl, give her a good home, and he does that. And it's just awesome. And he's always getting shit for it too. They're always trying to take her away. He's having strokes. You know, all sorts of shit's happening in this show. But in the end, he always prevails. Which is why it's great. So you go, Henry Warnemont. You deserve Punky Rooster the whole time anyway. And so we've reached number one. Which again, is not an actual blood father. But blood grandfather instead. When it befell him to raise his grandson, after his daughter and her husband were killed in a car crash, he raised this boy to become a man so perfect he could only exist on TV. A man who always does the right thing, believes in truth, justice, equality, fights for the rights of the oppressed, humans and animals alike, trees too, never kills or even uses a gun, even though he's an international spy just like James Bond. He uses his ingenuity and resourcefulness and a love and respect for science to get by. And when he's not doing that, he's helping the inner city youth in his local area work for a better and more equal future. This man was truly someone to aspire to be like and somehow was never given a first name and always went by the family last name instead. That name was MacGyver. Now you know the rest of the story, but I'm gonna keep talking anyway. So why did MacGyver have no first name? Well, the storyline in the original series to this makes no sense as to why MacGyver has no first name or why he doesn't know it. Supposedly he did have a first name, but they didn't know it because his parents died. I don't know, there, there was, it never made any sense. But he did eventually find out his first name. It was Angus. He found out in a dream. Yeah, apparently in MacGyver, dreams are real. So... Don't worry, MacGyver is not logical. MacGyver exists in science fiction universe. He got hit in the head with a pot, got knocked out unconscious, had a dream that he was in medieval times as himself, where he had to go fight an evil queen who had discovered gunpowder hundreds of years before the Chinese and had invented a gun too. And somehow, while he was in his prison cell, found his name on the wall or something. It never made sense to me. But supposedly, in MacGyver's dream world, is also factual shit can happen, I guess. I don't know. But it doesn't matter because every time MacGyver had a dream, he would bring a physical object from the dream back into the real world with him. Yes, this actually happens on MacGyver. All sorts of stuff happens on MacGyver that's pure science fiction. But there's a lot of good moral values in it too. But through all this weirdness, MacGyver was always a pure soul who could do no wrong. He would always try to find the best way out of a situation by making use of everything around him. It's how you look at it. It's how you think. It's the process of MacGyver's thinking. And from time to time, you would see the man behind this man, the man who raised him, his grandfather. The last time you saw him was 
in a dream again. MacGyver got knocked out unconscious again because he's always getting knocked out unconscious and getting brain damage doesn't affect him. It's sort of like Rocky. He just doesn't get hurt. He just gets knocked out, has a dream, a bunch of stuff happens in it that's relevant to the real world, and then he comes back to the real world. Yeah. After his grandfather died in the series, MacGyver got knocked out unconscious and had a dream that he was on a boat going to the other side with his grandfather that he had to escape from. But anybody who can raise a child to grow up to be somebody who can build an airplane and fly it off a mountain in a couple of hours is definitely one of TV's greatest father figures ever. That's why number one goes to MacGyver's dad, who's actually his grandfather. Because that's who raised MacGyver. A father figure. And that's it. The top 10 best TV dads or father figures on television. According to me, of course. A lot of you probably disagree with that list. Because like, oh, you didn't include, I don't know, Dick Van Dyke? <laughs> oh well. I could only do 10. Well, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed and maybe even agree with some of the choices I put on this list. Again, I could only pick 10. Gross. I remember that disgusting commercial. It's from the 90s. They wouldn't show that shit now, would they? Anyway, I gotta get out of here because... You love... Son. It's your old man. Your pops. Your dads. The hell? Hey, it's my old man. What a coincidence, huh? Hello, son. How's your been? Great. How'd you like my top 10 list? That's why I'm here, son. Broadcasting myself to you via satellite from the smelly shores of New Jersey. It was a good list, son. I really enjoyed it. Only you didn't include Fred Sanford from Sanford and Son. I really would have liked to have seen him on the list, too. I know, right? I really wanted to, but like I said, I only put 10 on there. Or what about Gomez Adams? Did you forget about him, son? I was in love with Gomez Adams once. In love. Yeah, right? Dang. Totally forgot about him. Shit. And even Dr. Smith on Lost in Space sometimes acted as a father figure to Will Robinson. At least towards the end of the series, when it became their show. I guess. Sorta. Or what about that Marcus Welby guy from Father Knows Best? Or Danny Thomas from Make Room for Daddy? That Fresh Prince of Bel-Air guy. All right, enough already. I know, there's a ton more. Could Hazel technically count as a father figure? She did kind of take care of the whole family. Oh, that's it. Shut up already. And she was sort of butch, too. All right. Goodbye, son. In love. All right, fine. Better than listening to that shit. I know, there's a lot more than 10, okay? I get it. I could only pick 10 of my personal favorites, right? Damn it. Good night, folks, and happy Father's Day. Hey, it's that cardboard cutout that everybody thought was a ghost. Idiot, I never thought it was a ghost. Even as a kid, I wasn't that stupid. <laughs>